Sherlock spoilers for all of series 4. I can't express just how pleased I am with this TV show. Even the more recent episodes people have been critical of I thought were all outstanding, mainly because I have a biased obsession with confusion, twists, and insane writing. My favorite moment in the series by far is when Euros Holmes reveals herself. I've never actually had my mouth hang open when watching something. So it should come as no surprise to you all that I have just devised a theory so inexplicably phenomenal that your mind will literally fucking explode. Hello. I'm the theorizer, and this theory was more of an intuitive aha moment I had after recalling ridiculous loads of ideas I've had over the time I've watched this show, as opposed to a more inductive reasoning type theory. I hope I'm not overhyping my ideas, but my taste is much more particular and specific than most. I want twists and plot insanity, and I love confusing and paradoxical storytelling, and I suppose, to a wildly complex extent, this fully encapsulates the kind of thing I obsess over, and if this theory of mine is implemented into the show eventually, I would be absolutely baffled. First of all, let's look at Jim Moriarty. We don't know much about his past, but we can establish a few things. He is supposedly Irish, or lived there for a while as a child, but when he was a young child he killed Carl Powers much closer to London, indicating he lived there for some time after or before Ireland. Perhaps he moved back to Ireland, I don't know, but we do get direct confirmation that Moriarty, at a very young age, was in Sherlock's area when he killed Carl Powers, and he also claimed that Carl bullied him, which means Moriarty also attended schools nearby, most likely. Overall, this indicates that, despite his supposedly Irish heritage, he did live in London or its environs for a while as a child. Eros Holmes makes the claim that Moriarty has a brother who's a station master, and it made Moriarty jealous of him. That's generally why his pre-recorded pressure videos had train themes. Moriarty grew up and built a massive network of criminality and terrorism, because that's the obvious choice, I suppose. But I think something drastic. I think something utterly and completely drastic that answers so many questions and unresolved motives, something that has the possibility to be unlikely but very little can outright debunk it. So hear me out with this as I review the evidence. I think that somehow, some way, Moriarty had a more personal connection to Sherlock than what we might be led on to believe. No, not that way, ridiculous fanfics. What I mean is, Moriarty's known Sherlock for a longer time than we may think. Sherlock was never a famous detective until John Watson came along and blogged everything. So how does Jim Moriarty know him? Is it just because of his several connections? Because if he wanted to prove he's the most intellectually capable in the world, why not go after someone who's confirmed to be smarter, like Mycroft Holmes? His position in the government would be a much bigger task and drama, and it would be much more intricately fun for Moriarty, and just as easy considering what he can do with his connections. No. I think he knows Sherlock, and not because of the cabbie Sherlock stopped or the Chinese terrorists Sherlock stopped. Moriarty sponsored those people to get Sherlock's attention. The cabbie confirms this. His motivation always seems kind of like, hey, I found you somehow, you have a similar personality and you're smart, so I'll try to destroy you because I'm bored. But there feels like there's something more especially after we get the introduction of Euros Holmes and learn that Moriarty met with her for a mere five minutes in her maximum security cell in which she informed him of what to do to annihilate Sherlock. He then manipulated and provided resources for Euros to command the prison. We know so little about their relationship and this depth leads me to come to a purely intuitive and thought-provoking conclusion. I believe that Jim Moriarty is Victor Trevor. What? That's impossible. We saw Euros spy on him, make a poem about him, throw him into a well, and then later we see the bones of a child in said well. How could he possibly be alive, let alone be Moriarty? Here's the thing I question. 
do we see him die? If television of this caliber has taught me anything, it's that if you don't see someone die, there's the possibility that they could be alive. And I think that's true. What do we know? Well, first of all, we know that these writers love to play mind games. Second, we know Euros implies she killed Victor Trevor. And third, we see a clip of Victor in a well. Okay, so Euros can spontaneously change her mind due to her psychosis, as we see, and I do believe it was a part of Sherlock's deducing and remembering that caused that vision of Victor Trevor. It's like Sherlock has been tormented by the subtle knowledge of what he believed happened for years. Fear of deep waters, apparently. This is all induced by Euros, but there's more. And the final problem Sherlock has is not being able to see something so unbelievably insane that it just might be the case. So again, we only see Euros say she killed Victor Trevor, and we see him in the well. And I found a hole in Euros' claims that uproots everything her psychosis has lied about. Young Euros never outright said he died, just kind of implies it to play mind games, and she calls him Drowned Redbeard, you get the idea. But there it is, Drowned Redbeard. Euros is a child. First of all, how did she put Victor to sleep to get him into the well? She doesn't have the tranquilizers required as a child, so did she repeatedly bash his head with a boulder? No, that wouldn't ever succeed. So first hole, how could she possibly put him to sleep long enough to get him into the well? Second, how did young Euros make sure he stayed there? John Watson was tied down. Likely Euros went down there and chained him in before somehow being raised out by her goons, but young Euros would have no possible way of jumping all the way down the well, chaining Victor down, climbing back out. She was like five and Victor was an older, heavier, male child. Her mental capabilities do not equate to physical ones. My point? She calls him Drowned Redbeard. Nope. Not sensible, because it would be illogical if he were somehow chained down, which means that when the water rose, he should have been able to climb a little bit. I understand if she would have said something like, starved Redbeard, but she says drowned. If he wasn't tied down, there's no way he could have drowned if he simply latches onto the side of the wall as the water rises. So what does this lead me to believe? It leads me to believe that either Sherlock's vision of Victor was just that, a vision, or... Euros let him out with a rope after her motives changed, or he escaped. I do think that he was in the well at some point though, because we see it. Even though, again, that could just be likely more of Sherlock's pseudo-memory trying to deduce. So because of the general ambiguity and Euros' genius, we know it's entirely entirely possible for him to have survived, either by escaping or by Euros's will. But whose bones are down there in the well then? Well, we know they were a child's, which basically eliminates, um, adults. That's about it. There are plenty of other kids around for her to murder, or, <laughs> I just had another light bulb moment. The gravestones. All roads lead back to the concept of the well, and how the song had the gravestones as its central point and leads to the well, and the graves have the skeletons beneath them, and the well has the skeleton in it. Bingo. Uproot the skeleton of a child in the cemetery and throw it down there to convince those who find it. Lots of children died back then, in the 1800s and 1900s, due to chronic illness, which would make sense then, had one been buried in the yard. And skeletons can last longer depending on the location, such as in neutrally acidic soil. Putting them in the well would have the same reaction then, as Victor having died there. And it would successfully convince anyone who found Victor's body that she killed him, whether he escaped or she let him out. Or at least, it would convince the finder long enough for her to think of a new plan. Long enough before the forensic team learnt the truth. So now, the fun part. What? happened next. So now that we've established that it's totally possible he lived, here's the true theory I have devised. She did her thing on him. Whether he escaped or she let him out, she took him and she used him. As a massively huge, ultimate grand plan spanning decades, which would break Sherlock and ultimately lead to her own happiness in the end. She took and brainwashed Victor Trevor, like Mycroft seems to know she was capable of at that age. Seems like he's referencing an example. She then built him into the insane and mentally fractured mess 
of Jim Moriarty we have today. We were all so mind blown about Victor Trevor being Redbeard that we never stopped to analyze the basic logic behind him. After having this insane aha moment, I researched it a bit and only one other person I've seen online has shared this little idea of correlation and they asked about it on Quora but nobody stopped to think about it. Euros kidnapped Moriarty. Everyone thought he was dead, but he was forced away by Euros' actual death threats. Moriarty's explained past shapes the rest of it, and him ending up in Ireland where he was assimilated into a family with a station master brother given a new name, threatened by Euros if he were to ever return to his home, and the true madness begins in Euros turning him into a psychopath. I know it seems like one of those crazy elaborate schemes that should defy Occam's razor, but Hear me out, because this explains so much. Already, here's a mind blow. Eros' plan spans so much more than anyone could know. She knew Moriarty before meeting him in her cell. It's almost like they secretly imply that this is the case. So even if he isn't Victor Trevor, we have an indication that she did know him as a child. Meaning perhaps he was at a home for the criminally insane children that she was also in, or perhaps he was Victor Trevor. So what proof do I have that they knew each other. Well, she directly asked for him after spending a supervised hour or two on Twitter. How did she know him via Twitter? He's a top secret mastermind nobody gets to. Does nobody question her discovering him? Is this something Mycroft is covering up? Like how he says she manipulated people at that age, implying someone. More on Mycroft's cover-ups later, but she spent only a little while on Twitter and predicted a bunch of major terrorist attacks. This isn't intelligence, this is methodical planning with Jim Moriarty, who assimilates all of the major terrorists, Jim Moriarty, who plotted them, Jim Moriarty. Euros has, at some point in her past, fooled everyone into believing she's clairvoyant. She can gaslight and manipulate the utter hell out of people, but she's not a god. They think she is because of things like the terrorist attack predictions, but that's all a setup for them to overestimate her IQ so that she can fool Mycroft into giving her gifts, so she can get a violin to entrance and irritate the guards, so that she can once again meet with Moriarty in person unsupervised to plan out Sherlock's final problem. And you want a mind blow? Moriarty walks up to Euros and says he's her Christmas present. She walks up to him and says, Redbeard. As they move oddly in the glass as if they have a relationship, Mycroft isn't allowed to know about. Did you catch that though? No, I'm not talking about the symbolism of how her face sort of melds into his, indicating that he's already been long since her puppet, but good observation if you did catch that. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, did you catch how she called him? Redbeard. Oh yes, <laughs> you thought she was just beginning to feed him info, telling him of the info he's about to receive. No, she was acknowledging him. We never really see Moriarty use something like Redbeard against Sherlock because Euros didn't talk to him about information Moriarty already knows. She's acknowledging him by his childhood nickname to indicate that their plans, psychopathies manipulated decades prior, will all land on Sherlock like a psychological nuke. Just listen to the inflection she has when she says it. Redbeard. It's an acknowledgement. Eurus knows getting people to hate someone is easier than getting them to love them. So she got Sherlock's very own childhood friend to turn on him, probably by saying, Oh, Sherlock didn't save you from me. Very easy to convince children. She got him to turn on him while having Moriarty still appreciate Sherlock, ultimately resulting in his supposed death. So in the end, Euros truly is the only one who can play with Sherlock. She got what she wanted. She convinced Victor that Sherlock was the enemy. The depth of Moriarty's impact on Sherlock is astounding. He's made a permanent mark in Sherlock's psyche, and despite Sherlock mentally destroying him in the special episode, Moriarty is right. He even calls himself a virus, sort of like the kind of nagging thing Euros is known for instilling. Moriarty's grand plan is to outdo Sherlock by watching him fail and putting the pieces together. 
Moriarty is Sherlock's only friend aside from John, truly, and Sherlock failed to discover that truth. Hair often darkens intensely with age, especially from someone being like five or six. People change quite a bit, so you shouldn't be at all worried about the appearance, but even if you are, Moriarty even shares a resting bitch face with Victor. I always thought it was odd of this show to introduce a contingent plot point like Victor Trevor in the last few minutes of a finale, unless his importance was much deeper. So then what about the bones in the well? Surely after John escaped, the police would try to identify the owner of the bones and their death age, right? Well, we don't see the outcome, but I bet something absolutely insane. I bet Mycroft is covering it all up because he knows something's up with Jim Moriarty. Even after sharing all of the information on Euros with Sherlock, Mycroft still lied about Redbeard being a dog for no apparent reason. Unless he's been trying desperately hard to prevent Sherlock from learning something, something so traumatic it would put him into a borderline comatose state. The fact that Euros is still playing a game and Moriarty is still alive and perhaps truly in control of Euros. Even Mycroft acknowledges that, given time, she will kill again. I have so much more, but this theory is getting abysmally lengthy, so next week I'll make the most important addition possible, why Jim Moriarty is likely still alive, and what Mycroft Holmes has done to assure his brother survives the mental trauma Euros and Moriarty still have yet to inflict. So click the subscribe button below so next week you'll be able to learn all about that. If you think this theory is outlandish, I agree with you in certain respects, but if it's possible, and it is, then this show's entire base just became uprooted. Click on the little bell next to the subscribe button and select all notifications as opposed to occasional, because then you'll actually be informed of when the next video goes up. And it'll be a doozy, because it's the main and central concept of all of this. The finale, this is just the build-up. Moriarty's still alive, and Mycroft is scrambling. And of course I actually get to further trying to prove this whole insane idea of Victor Trevor. So until then, next week, I'm The Theorizer.